So I tell my dad and he goes, well, I would love to see you get a woman pregnant. And I said, oh, no, no, no. She would be getting me pregnant. And then he said, what, do you have a vagina now? And I said, never say never. Dylan Mulvaney's wishes just keep coming true. The National Post recently published an article discussing womb transplants. This procedure was originally intended for women who have fertility issues, but doctors say that there's no reason that men can't have this procedure done too. Okay, how much time do you have? He's having this baby. So the article reads, 45 years after the world's first test tube baby was born, surgeons are preparing for another historical first transplanting a womb inside the body of someone born male, with the first such procedure likely to happen within the next few years, if not sooner. So one thing that I actually didn't know until reading this article is that this was something that has been done already. For American women unable to conceive a child, the Cleveland Clinic says it's ready to transplant a uterus into a woman who lacks one. 10 women will be chosen for a medical trial. Success was found in Sweden last year where nine women received donated uteruses, five achieved pregnancy, and four gave birth. For these 10 U.S. women, doctors say the process will be long and emotionally challenging. At least 80 womb transplants have been performed in over 10 countries worldwide since the first baby was born following a uterine transplant in Sweden in 2014. More than 35 healthy babies have been delivered. So it looks like this procedure has a less than 50% success rate if out of 80, only 35 were healthy babies. If the anatomical challenges in transgender women can be overcome and surgeons have said none seem insurmountable, uterus transplants would make it possible for trans women to gestate and give birth to a child. The baby would be delivered via cesarean. Others have sketched a hypothetical but plausible case in which a transgender woman who undergoes a uterus transplant carries a pregnancy conceived with her own previously frozen sperm Shouldn't it be his sperm, I guess her sperm, her sperm. That's a weird sentence to say. Raising ethical and legal issues regarding what parental title she should be given, mother or father. Degendering legal parenthood, they say, may be the simplest and most ethical solution. Absolutely not. No. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! No! No. No, absolutely not. No. So it seems like if this were to come to pass and transgender women are able to carry their own baby that they fertilize with their own sperm, it creates, it creates an ethical dilemma about whether or not they are the mother or father. Okay, that's a whole separate situation. But why are we going to get rid of the term mother and father for this small group of people? No, we are not going to lose that term for everybody else. You can call them parent one, you can call them mother and father, you can call them whatever you want, but we're not going to lose those words. Leave the term mother and father alone. But there's a larger question at hand. Is this even ethical? Some have called uterus transplants for trans women a dystopian biological experiment. Bioethicist. Who? There's a job title called bioethicist. Bioethicist Gwendolyn Quinn said trans women should deserve equal access to a medical procedure offered to other women. If this is something that's available to humans, it should be available to all humans, said Quinn. But from a philosophical and feminist perspective, she finds uterus transplants in general really troubling. Okay, so how do you actually feel? Others argued that excluding trans women violates their right to gestate. And that a biological male who identifies as female could arguably have uterine factor infertility that's no functionally different than a female who can't get pregnant because she lacks a uterus or a functioning one. Okay, there's a lot to unpack in that paragraph. First of all, I take issue with referring to a biological male as having, what was the word? Uterine factor infertility. Sorry, but how can you have uterine factor infertility if you do not have a uterus? Like, huh? This is like saying that snakes have a right to walk, 
because other serpents are born with legs. And since when was gestation a right? When has the government ever guaranteed you the right to gestate? It's not a right. It's a biological privilege. It's a biological privilege that is afforded to females. And unfortunately, there are some women who are unable to have children. But by and large, that is a trait, a biological trait that belongs to females. It was not a gestation right that was handed down to us from the government. It is just a biological fact. So the article goes on to explain how the vessels in the pelvic area of a male can be used to connect to the transplanted uterus and that in order to keep the implanted uterus alive, the person needs to stay on anti-rejection drugs. So that's the same for both male and females. They have to stay on anti-rejection drugs to keep the body from rejecting the implanted uterus. So even if the person is not pregnant, they still need to be on these drugs. And the uterus is allowed to be used for up to two pregnancies. So let's say you have the first child and you want to wait a year or two before having the second child. You need to stay on medications the entire time. And because males do not naturally produce the same pregnancy hormones that females produce because males are not meant to have babies, there's other hormones that have to be taken to create the proper hormonal environment artificially so that the baby can survive. Now, I have issues with this because already it's a difficult procedure for biological women to do successfully. As I mentioned, the success rate is less than 50%. So imagine all of the babies who maybe made it to four months, maybe made it to five months, or they were born but they were born with defects because it says 35 healthy babies. I think that's very intentional wording. That doesn't mean that more of them were not born. It just means that they were not healthy babies. So there could have been stillbirths, there could have been deformities, there could have been problems. And even those 35 babies, how are they like right now? Are they medicalized infants or, or toddlers at this point? And what do you define as healthy? I know when I go to the doctor, they tell me I'm healthy and I'm not. <laughs> Basically, I'm not, I'm not about to drop dead tomorrow. That's what most doctors consider healthy. And there's the side effects that could come for the baby, but there's also the side effects that happen to the patient that is on the drugs and doing the procedure. So the article goes on to say, but there's a level of medical danger, she said. Multiple attempted transplants have failed after the woman's body rejected the donor uterus. People have lost circulation in their legs and have had to have the uterus removed so they didn't lose their legs. Damn! There have been a lot of adverse outcomes that the public doesn't know about. So why don't you tell us, bioethicist Quinn? How is that ethical? Why, you're a bioethicist and there are side effects for this procedure that we don't know about. And you as a bioethicist don't feel inclined to disclose those side effects? What kind of ethicist are you, Quinn? So this article surprisingly allowed for comments. So I picked a few that I wanted to read. So this person says, propaganda alert. So who's ultimately paying for this nonsense? Rhetorical question, scam. That's another thing. Who is going to be paying for it? If this is covered through government benefits or through insurance, health insurance, I take personal offense to this because women, we do not get in vitro covered by the government or insurance plans. My health insurance policy it does not cover birth control. So I pay 100% out of pocket for my monthly birth control, freezing eggs, in vitro, fertilize, um, fertility treatments. All of that stuff is not covered by the government or by my, my health insurance. And I'm sure a lot of people are in the exact same boat as me, but people who are transgender have their gender-related issues covered through insurance or government benefit programs. My birth control is a gender-related issue. It's hormone therapy, just like HRT. Why isn't mine covered? When you think about it, that's kind of patriarchal. So you're not willing to help women with fertility issues, but you're going to help men have babies? They better, they better not cover this with taxpayer dollars. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not fair. It's just not fair. I think any liberal who gets behind this is definitely going to lose support. In whatever country it is, whether it's it's Sweden, Canada, Australia, the UK, US, I think by and large, majority of people who are, you know, progressive or who are liberal, I think there's limits. I think especially people who are in the middle when it comes to the pro-life slash pro-choice debate, I think people in the middle 
this is something that will push them more to the right because, like I said, less than 50% success rate. So we don't know how many babies are going to be euthanized or aborted because the procedure is not going very well. Think about that. In all honesty, I think any biological male who chooses to do this is doing it for vanity's sake. There are other avenues to become a parent. This is something that is dangerous to both you and the child, and this is really just a vanity project. So this comment, The book Homo Deus by Harari comes to mind. Why not skip this step and move right to cloning? You know, I was thinking that's definitely where it's going to go next. That's what's happening. That's going to come. Are people's own DNA so essential to pass down they could not think to adopt a child? I think they meant to say opting. Opting to transplant a uterus with all that goes with it versus adoption. And, you know, I just want to say this. I have sympathy for people who genuinely and sincerely have gender dysphoria or any other condition that causes someone mental anguish when it comes to their gender. But at what point does our society draw the line between biological realities and fantasies. I don't think just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should. So the last comment reads, this mad scientist experimentation is not in the best interest of transgendered people either. It is a recipe for disaster and creates, dr it is a recipe for disaster and creates greater marginalization, not less. All of the woke support for this nonsense is disguised as support for people with gender dysphoria when in fact it is the opposite and is an avenue for destruction based on insecurities and vulnerabilities that are poorly understood. A study in Sweden reports that more than 60% of those with gender dysphoria have multiple mental health disorders that include bipolar disorder, personality disorders, PTSD, self-harm, substance abuse, and low self-esteem. And I've also seen a lot of stories, just a side note, I've also seen a lot of stories that there are people, young people, people who are teenagers or preteens who are being diagnosed as trans when in actuality they are on the spectrum. So the comment continues, those who regret the decision are not provided with any support or ways to reverse it. There are so many regretters that a renowned expert in the field applied for a research grant at a majority university and was declined the grant. So according to this commenter, there is a researcher who is trying to look into the detrans community, people who are choosing to detransition. They want to do research into it, and they were denied funding. In addition, it is causing major ethical dilemmas in healthcare surrounding the transgendered issues because people are not given proper assessments Time to reconsider pre-screening or counseling. They are victims of the system too. I think this person summed it up perfectly. Let me know your thoughts about this whole thing in the comment section down below. Do you think that women should be allowed to do this procedure? You know, biological women. Do you think that men should be allowed to do this procedure? Do you think that neither should be allowed to do this procedure or only women? If you have other interesting stories that you would like me to cover, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. If you've made it to this point in the video and you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I would I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to support me. If you would like to support this video, you can hit the like button. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one, I have two more recommendations for you and I will see you guys in the next one.